We just got the latest worldwide market share numbers for 2021, and Canon still dominates with Sony fast closing in in second place, but Nikon's fallen to a distant third. What about Panasonic and Fuji? Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. 8,490,000 digital cameras were sold in 2021. That's down 4.9% from 2020, with the top five companies dominating with 94%. In 2021, Canon still dominated the worldwide market share of cameras with 45.8%, but that's down 2.1% from the previous year. And one of the main reasons for Canon losing market share is most likely because, well, they haven't been able to get cameras out for us to purchase. The R5 for much of that period was, well, in short supply, as were many of their lenses. The R10 and the R7 just finally came out here in 2022, so they're not included in the numbers. And what about the Canon EOS RP successor, the R9, or the R8, a camera that's supposed to sit between the successor to the RP and, of course, the R6? Well, nowhere to be seen as well, not even in 2022. And here we are in 2022 at the end of it, and we've only had a few cameras from Canon, so I don't expect their numbers in 2022 to be much better. Where's the Canon EOS R1, their flagship mirrorless camera? Sony's had a two-year lead and Nikon a one-year lead. What about the R7C? A cinema version of the R7 that's designed to compete with the FX30, at least, well, that's what we think because, well, we've got the FX30, but no hint, no crickets, nothing about the R7C. And what about a high megapixel version of the R5? Crickets chirping again, not much going on there. Cinema cameras that were supposed to come out in 2020, then 2021, and still haven't come out in 2022, are, new, are, now, are now due for 2023. So while Canon was having a hard time getting cameras out to the marketplace, hard time getting lenses out to the marketplace, and not announcing really much in terms of new cameras, well, at least in 2021, and here in 2022, well, we didn't get that much either. Not a lot that was expected anyhow. Well, Sony certainly made up a lot of that in second place with, well, a gain of almost 5%, 4.9%, putting them up to 27% market share. 27% market share, that's a huge gain for Sony, putting them solidly in second place. And Nikon, well, this is a little bit scary here. Nikon has fallen all the way down to 11.3%, 11.3%. That's pretty scary. Just a couple of years ago, Nikon was tied with Sony for 22, 24%. And I know what Nikon's problem is. It's the same problem that Canon's having. They can't get enough cameras out there. Where's the Z6 Mark III? Where's the Z7 Mark III? What about the Z5 Mark II? And of course, that camera we've been talking about for a so very long time, the Nikon Z8. Nikon isn't getting enough cameras out there quickly enough. Where's their answer to the R5? Where's their answer to the FX3, the FX30? Where's their answer to the A7R5? I love Nikon. They produce really good cameras, and the Nikon Z9 shows us what Nikon's capable of. But if they don't release the cameras, or they don't release cameras to the marketplace quickly enough, well, people aren't going to be able to buy them. And sadly, Nikon's lost half its market share in the last two or three years. Well, their customers have been waiting for new cameras. I don't know how much longer they can wait. And at 11.3%, it's not looking good for 2022. Now, 2023 could definitely see a rebound if the Z6 Mark III, the Z7 Mark III, produce really solid cameras that are in high demand, or the Z8 comes out, a camera better than the R5, better than the Sony A7R5, or even the Z5 Mark II. If Nikon can deliver on these cameras in the first half, then they can have a really good 2023. But these numbers, 11.3%, are based on 2021 numbers, and it doesn't look like we're going to see much of an improvement in 2022. Yes, we did have the Nikon Z9, which is definitely going to help, but where's the refresh of those other cameras? People are waiting for an update of the Z6 and 7. They're waiting for the Mark 3s, and those people are probably staying on the sidelines. So I don't expect a huge improvement in Nikon for 2022. So that leaves us with Fuji and Panasonic. And I've got good news for Fuji fans. Well, Fuji actually grew their market share up to 5.9%. Now that's only up 0.3%, but 
But considering they were only around, well, 5.6%, that's a rather sizable increase in their market share of several percent. But Panasonic, take a wild guess at what Panasonic did in 2021. Did they grow their market share? Well, we didn't have a whole lot coming out by Panasonic and same with 2022. We're really looking for an, a, a huge update from Panasonic in 2023 with phase detect autofocus and a new line of S-series cameras. We did get the GH6 here in 2022, but of course that's too late for the numbers in 2021. So how much did they grow their market share? I, and I know what you're thinking, or how much did they lose in market share? Take a wild guess. Did they grow or did they shrink? Well, good news for Panasonic fans. At least I guess this is good news. They didn't shrink in their market share, but they didn't grow it either. Panasonic is flat year over year with no additional growth at 4.4%. Yep, that's right, at 4.4%. So that's really good news. Panasonic didn't lose market share in 2021, holding out at 4.4%. Hopefully they can grow that past 5%. I don't want to see Panasonic flounder. I don't want to see them move or exit out of the stills hybrid camera market. I want to see them grow. I want to see them release a new line of S-series cameras, the S1H, the S1R, the S5, the S1 with a face detect autofocus system that will capture our imagination. But the real news in 2021 isn't so much that Canon is dominating, and we've seen this over the past three to five years. Their market shares range between 45 and a high of 48% market share. They've, it depends on how many cameras or lenses they were able to release to the market. They, they were able to ship to the market really is more than anything else. Not release, but ship. We're seeing that with the R6 Mark II right now that they're having trouble after just about, what, three days? Canon said, yeah, sorry, we're, we, we're getting way more demand than we expected and we're gonna have trouble meeting that demand. And it's supposed to start shipping in just a few days. So good news there around November the 30th, I believe, the, the Nikon, the Canon R6 Mark II is gonna start shipping. But the really big news here is how Sony just seems to be, well, aggressively, attacking the market. What is the word I used in the, in the, um, in the thumbnail? I, I forget. Let me take, I want to take a look at the word I used in the thumbnail. Does it still uh, jive with what I'm saying here? The words I used in the thumbnail. So dominate, that's for Canon. Destroy is Sony and crash is Nikon. I certainly think that the word destroy um, is what Sony is doing to that part in the market. They have basically destroyed Nikon. They've come out with cameras the a7 IV is selling very, very well. Since that camera came out, what was it, last December? It's been dominating the top 10 worldwide camera sales, not always in first place, but quite often you'd see it around third place, and then you'd see a kit version a few places down, which if you add those both together, because it's essentially the same camera, clearly dominating all the retail sales in Japan, Sony is doing very well with the a7 IV. They just announced the a7R5, the a7S3 was a camera that was released back in 2020 that continues to do well. And the big story again, Sony hitting well with the FX3, a cinema version or a video centric version of the a7S3, and then coming out with an APS-C version of that for less than half the price. 1798 for the FX30, a camera that's also in high demand. Sony just seems to be doing all the right things. They're getting cameras out to the market. Not only that, they're getting them into a sizable quantity where they're able to grow their market share. 5%, 4.9% in 2021. And while probably some of that was taken from Canon because they couldn't get camera units out, a lot of it was taken from Nikon with 11.3% market share. So that's the big story is what Sony's doing. They're moving up. They were in third place. They're now solidly in second place. And it just, I think it was last year, they were kind of tied for Nikon, tied with in second place with Nikon. The last couple of years they were tied. Then last year we saw some numbers with Nikon dropping to 14%. Nobody really believed that, but here we are now looking at around 11.3% market share for Nikon. Uh, I love Nikon, but Nikon, you've got to get some cameras out there. You, you, you cannot delay another year. Get the Z6 Mark III out there. Get the Z7 Mark III out there. Get the Z8. Knock our socks off with that camera like you did with the Nikon Z9 and get the Z5 Mark II out there. Really impress upon us. Give us cameras that are not just appealing to your current customers, but to people who bought the R5. Beat the R5. Answer the R5. 
answer the FX30, the FX3, the A7S III. There's a lot of cameras that have come out and we just haven't seen an answer from Nikon. And once we get that, we'll start to see the numbers move up. I'm not worried about Canon anytime soon. Canon keeps innovating. They keep coming out with new camera models, but Canon's biggest problem is just getting those cameras released a little sooner, not delaying year after year after year. Like where's the replacement for the RP? Where's all those other cameras we're supposed to be getting from Canon? They kept getting delayed year after year. Whereas Sony, well, the only thing we keep asking is, well, where's the A9 Mark III? Or will we get the Sony Alpha 1 Mark II anytime soon? Will that be coming out in 2023? Sony's doing, a, Sony's doing a great job of refreshing their lineup. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, I highly recommend subscribing, but also choosing all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors. It saves you from scrubbing all the Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, your favorite YouTube channels, websites, books, magazines, and all that stuff because, well, I cover all the major camera brands, all the major camera models, uh, news and rumors, and I do reviews. So all that right here in a single spot saves you from hunting it all down. So please subscribe and choose all notifications. That's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in and have yourself a great Wednesday. And for my U.S. friends, I, I've now been told Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I wouldn't be surprised. You're probably already taking the day off, aren't you? I, I wouldn't wait for Thursday either. If I was living in the United States, I would start by taking Wednesday off. You know what? No, I'd start by taking the whole week off, Monday all the way through to Cyber Monday. Enjoy, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.